This is the second in my series on the equations of motion. In my first video, we looked at the derivation of the equations. And now I'm going to look at the uh, scenarios that there could be in the use of these, remembering that this is all about situations where the acceleration is constant. So, possible scenarios. The first possible scenario is something falling under gravity, let's say. So your initial conditions here, we're going to say it's going to start from rest and its acceleration is going to be gravity. So this is, for example, you start your stone here and you drop it. So there's your first scenario, falling under gravity. Your second scenario would be something projected vertically against gravity. So again, you're going to have some uh, initial velocity because it's being projected. The acceleration here is minus g and that's because your object is going up but of course g is up, acting the opposite way uh, and of course you would expect this thing to stop at the top so you might say its final velocity is v. Then our Third scenario, we've done falling under gravity, we've done projected vertically uh, against gravity. Our third scenario would be projected horizontally. Now, of course, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to be at some height. So you're going to have uh, a cliff, perhaps, and you're going to project horizontally. So there's your uh, horizontal velocity. Now, you're almost certainly going to be interested in how long it takes to get to the ground from some height, the height of the cliff, and how far it goes horizontally before it lands. So here you're going to be looking at both the horizontal and the vertical motions. You're going to have to consider those separately. But horizontally, there is no acceleration. We're ignoring air resistance because we're physicists and we can do that. And vertically, the acceleration again will be gravity because as it falls, its velocity increases. So gravity is, uh, is acting positively, whereas here, as it rises, its velocity decreases. So clearly it's a negative acceleration. So those are our three scenarios that we need to deal with. The fourth scenario, which we don't so much need to deal with, but we're going to do anyway, uh, is projected at an angle to the ground. And so here you have your ground. Let me try to do that horizontally. And you project with a velocity at some angle. And again, you're going to have to consider your horizontal and your vertical. But here you're going to have to resolve your velocity your initial velocity vertically and your initial velocity horizontally. So you've got uh, u sine theta and u cos theta. u cos in this direction, 
you sign uh, in that direction. So those are your four scenarios. Now let's look at those scenarios in turn. So let's take something falling vertically under gravity. So our first scenario falling under gravity. Let's take an example of this then. So let's say we have a stone which is dropped into a well and it takes 3.0 seconds to hit the water. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's work out to start with How deep is the well? By which I mean how far is it to the water? So, what do we know? We know the initial velocity is zero because it's just dropped, it's not thrown. We know the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. And we know the time is 3.0 seconds. And I'm also noting I've got two sig figs here, I've got three here, so my answer will be to two. So, how deep is the well? Well, we want an equation of motion which connects the displacement with the initial velocity, the acceleration and the time. So, I would say S equals ut plus a half at squared does it for me. I know that u is zero, so that simplifies things nicely. Plus a half times 9.81 times 3 squared. That gives me 44.15, but that's four sig figs. I can only have two, so it's 44 to two sig figs. Then let's consider how fast it was traveling. Or words to that effect. So what do we know? Well, we know the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity we're looking for. The time is three seconds, 3.0 seconds. And acceleration is still gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. I want V, I've got U, A and T. What am I gonna do? V equals U plus A, T, of course. And if I stick in my numbers, 0, 9.81, 3. I'm going to get 29.43 out of that. But two sig figs, 29 meters per second to two sig figs. So... There's an example of our first scenario, nice and straightforward. Let's then consider firing something vertically upwards. This is our second scenario. Hmm. 
not the best syntax in the world. Projection vertically upwards. I was going to write that again, that's what I would write. So let's consider another stone. Maybe it's the same stone. A stone projected vertically upwards at 40 meters per second. Pause there for a moment and think, that's very fast. So this is being fired mechanically. This is not someone throwing this by hand. So again, gravity is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Why is it minus? Because as it goes up, it slows down. We're taking up as positive here. So let's ask ourselves, how high does it go? How about that? The maximum height attained. So what do we know? Well, we know the initial velocity is 40 meters per second. We know when it gets to its maximum height, it will stop. So we know the final velocity in this journey is zero. We know that the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared and we want to know s. So we've got v, u, a, and we want s. How about v squared equals u squared plus 2as? We've got 0 equals u squared. Well, there's 40 squared, 1600, minus 2 by 9.81 by s, which gives us s to be minus 1600 over minus twice 9.81. That's going to give us 81.5. And uh, if we look at it, we've got two sig figs here. So that's going to be 82 meters to two sig figs. So that's nice and straightforward. How about we find out how long it takes to come back? Let's call that time in the air. Well, that's going to be the time to go up plus the time to go down, isn't it? So the time to go up, what's that going to be? Well, we know we have initial velocity of 40 meters per second, acceleration of minus 9.81. We know the velocity will be zero at the top. So how about uh, V equals U plus AT? I'm going to work horizontally as far as I can here to let me do all of this in one. So we know zero is 40 minus 9.81 times t, which gives us t on the way up to be uh, 4.08 seconds. Now, if we wanted that as our answer, we would write it as uh, 4.1 seconds, but we don't want that. And we're not going to round just yet because we don't round in the middle of calculation. So time on the way down then. Well, what do we know? We know our initial velocity, it will start at zero meters per second. Uh, we know it will travel 82 meters. So if we said S equals UT plus a half AT squared, now, 
this is displacement and we set up was positive and this is coming down so that's minus 82 u of course starts off at zero at the top minus a half by 9.81 times t squared and that then gives us uh, a t of 4.08 seconds which is no coincidence the time on the way up and the time on the way down they're going to be the same and so the time of flight here if you want to call it that the time in the air is 4.08 times 2 which gives us 8.2 seconds to two sig figs so you could have just worked out the time on the way up and doubled it but I wanted to illustrate that the two were the same and then finally how about the velocity on its return well we know it starts off at zero meters per second at the top so we have u equals zero a equals minus 9.81 meters per second squared because it's still in that negative direction uh, and we know it spends uh, 4.01 seconds doing it or zero eight sorry so if we used v equals u plus at we get v to be minus 40 to 2 sig figs notice how the maths takes care of you if you're careful with your signs your answer will be correct in terms of its direction so there's your second scenario our third scenario then projecting the thing horizontally the same unfortunate stone okay so let's say we have a cliff 100 meters high let's say we project horizontally at 10 meters per second and we're going to want to know how far from the base of the cliff the stone lands as part of our question so let's say our first part of the question time of flight how long does the stone spend in the air well ask yourself what's the limiting factor here hopefully you'll see that the time of flight is the time it takes the stone to get from here to here. Hopefully a moment's thought will tell you that it doesn't matter how fast this is. That's got nothing to do with how long it takes to cover this distance. It doesn't matter whether this is dropped from here or whether you fire out of a gun and it's doing 900 meters per second horizontally the two will hit the ground at the same time they will fall this distance in the same time assuming there's no air resistance of course in the real world that isn't the case but this is our 
cliff in a vacuum because we ignore air resistance because we're physicists and we can. So the time of flight. This is the time to fall 100 metres under gravity. So we consider our vertical motion Remembering we have to consider both in this scenario. So, u equals zero vertically. Let's make that uv. a is 9.81 because the velocity is increasing with time. And we want to know the time to fall 100 meters. Now, of course, you could say acceleration is negative because it's becoming more and more negative velocity as it falls. And therefore, the displacement is also negative. So both of these would be negative or in my scenario, I've decided I'm going to call them positive because it doesn't make any difference to me uh, because they're either both positive or both negative. But let's say then uh, S equals UT plus a half a T squared. We've got 100 U is zero plus a half by 9.81 by t squared, which gives us t to be 4.5 seconds. Then ask ourselves, what is x? How far does it travel from the base of the cliff before it hits the ground? Well, of course, x that is the horizontal displacement during the time of flight. So what do we know? Well, we know that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second. We know the acceleration is zero because we ignore air resistance. So we know it's going to do 10 meters per second for 4.5 seconds. And so X will be 45 meters. Final question, final part of this question then, for which I'm going to need another sheet. Final part of the question then, what is the velocity on impact? Now, remember this is a vector. So, consider the vertical motion Consider the horizontal motion, consider the direction. So, horizontal velocity, well, that is 10 meters per second, it always was. There's no acceleration horizontally. The vertical velocity is u plus at, of course, which is zero plus. 9.81 times 4.5. So 4.51 actually it was. So that gives us a vertical velocity of 44.3 meters per second. So now we have 
10 meters per second that way. Forty four point three meters per second that way. That's our resultant. That's our angle. So V then is the square root by Pythagoras of ten squared plus forty four point three squared. And the angle of course is the inverse tan of 44.3 for 10. So if you do a little bit of arithmetic there, you'll get 45.4 here. So there's 45, the two sig figs. And you'll get 77 degrees to two sig figs there. So let's look at our final scenario then, projecting at some angle. So let's say we project something at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal at 900 meters per second. So we want to know the maximum height attained. We want to know the time of flight and we want to know the range. We could also be looking at the velocity on return but I'm just going to do these three here. So looking at our first scenario, first part of the question rather, the maximum height. This is all about the vertical motion. And so we want to know our initial vertical velocity. And we know, of course, when it gets to the top, it's going to stop. And we know the acceleration will be minus gravity because as it goes up it slows down. And we want to know the vertical displacement under these conditions. So what is our initial vertical velocity? Well here we have 900 meters per second. This would be the vertical component of the 900 this would be the horizontal. You can see that vertically uh, you would say the sine of 30 would be uv over 900 and so uv is 900 sine 30. And by the same process, your horizontal is 900 cos 30. And we're going to need that later. So, just a reminder there on the resolution of vectors. So, we have 900 sine 30 here. So, we want S, we've got V, U, and A. So, we would say, sensibly, I think, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. v we know to be 0, u we know to be 900 sine 30, which is a half, of course, so that's nice and simple, squared minus 2 by 9.81 times s. So we end up taking this over here, it becomes negative, divided by minus 2 times 9.81. And we get a height attained of 10,321 metres, which is to two, sorry, three significant figures, 10.3 kilometres. The second part then, the time of flight, Let's look at that. 
So our time of flight That is, of course, the time it takes in the air. So that's twice the time to the maximum height. So we would say vertically u equals 900 sine 30 degrees meters per second. V, of course, is zero. A is minus 9.81 meters per second squared, and we want to know the time. So, how about V equals U plus A T? T then is uh, V minus U over A, and that gives us V is zero, minus 900 sine 30 divided by 9.81, that gives us 91.74 seconds, which is 91.7 seconds uh, to two sig figs. Sorry, uh, it's two times that. Ninety one point seven seconds. The final part then, part three, the range. And of course, in this case, what we mean by range is the distance traveled horizontally during the time of flight. So, we're looking at the distance travelled horizontally, so there's no acceleration. We have our velocity, initial velocity, which is the final velocity, because it doesn't change, because there's no acceleration. And that, of course, is 900 cos 30 degrees because the horizontal, so the vertical was 900 sine 30. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared where uh, A is zero. So S equals UT which equals 900 cos 30 degrees times the time, which was 91.74. And that gives us 71.5 kilometers.